So feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, sitting bones down, ribs in and up, shoulders relaxed, and head reaching to the ceiling, mountain pose. So anytime, Marla, that you just need to stop, mountain pose is a good thing always to practice getting that lengthening through your spine and letting your breath just guide you full and deep. So let your belly move, diaphragm moving down, breath expanding. And as you exhale, let everything, everything sink in and release the breath. So take a few moments just to get that rhythm going, that inner focus, making sure that you're in your yoga frame of reference. And remember, personal practice, I know you know this, Marla, but especially you, pay attention and don't do what feels wrong. So inhaling, arms out to shoulder level, stretch way out and up. Exhale, hands to your chest, elbows a little bit back, keep the shoulders open. Inhale, keeping your shoulders down, extending your arms out to the front. And exhale, hands behind you. Just clasp the fingertips or press the palms together, your choice. Inhale and stretch your head back. And then pivot at the hips, coming as much over into the forward bend as your body allows. So you can stay just part way down or you can deepen into the full forward bend as much as you like. So it's really more a pivot at the top of the hips rather than a bend at your waist. You can tuck in your chin, move your neck around a little bit, get the back of your neck getting some relief. Hands coming up toward your head, toward the ceiling, so those shoulders get a little bit more activity. And then with your knees bent, lift your ribs, sitting bones down, chin in, and wind slowly back up. And come into the upper body for the back bend, never your low back. We don't want to overwork that. So shoulders down, head back, chest high. Keep breathing into the whole lung capacity. And then inhale upright, exhale, and release. So take a moment feeling your body, noticing anything going on through your spine, through your breath. And again, we're going to inhale, arms are reaching at shoulder level, shoulders down. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows back. Stretch out to the front, shoulders down again. And again, hands behind, but this time shift your fingers one position and clasp. Lift your heart <clears throat> and pivot over. So right at the hips, come down. You can stay Partway, parallel to the floor, deepening whatever is good for your body today. You can keep the knees a little bent, or you can lift the knees, tighten the quads, and lift your sitting bones for some hamstring stretch, your choice. And again, just relax through the neck, through the spine, deepen or not, your body tells you what to do. And then again, inhale, wind your way slowly to the top. And heart high as you press your hands slightly down and your head a little bit back, opening across the chest. Keep breathing, lengthening through the body, through the spine. And then inhale up, release your arms, and just take a moment feeling how that is working in your body. So take a moment again just to focus inward, make sure you're Evenly connecting into your bottoms of your feet. And then inhale, arms out to the sides. Turn the palms toward the ceiling and bring your arms over your shoulders. And then mental yoga, pass the hands and clasp them. And then pull the arms back by your ears. Sitting bones and shoulder blades down. Keep the body facing forward, no twisting, and lean over to the side. So Liz, be careful with your side if it's over constricted and just do what's right for you. If it's good, press the foot down and get a little bit more lengthening through the ribs and the oblique. And maybe kind of relax it to release that stress. And then inhale back to the center. Switch your hands around so the other one's in front. And again, pull the shoulder blades and sitting bones down as you stretch and without twisting, lean to the other side. 
maximize or minimize. So either keep just leaning a little bit or press the foot down and extend out to your hands and head for a little bit more stretch. And then inhale again to the and exhale into your mountain pose. So take a moment there, feeling your sides, the spine, getting a little of that lateral motion. And we're gonna do our twist, so Marla, be gentle with yourself on this one. Inhale, arms to shoulder level, palms toward the ceiling, arms over your shoulders, clasp your elbows. Sitting bones down, crown high, exhale, weight on both feet evenly as you twist. So only go as far as your body is willing to go. It can be just a little, that's perfectly good. And then lengthen up, breathing in, and on the exhalation, pivot. And again, come only as far as your body wants to into the twist forward then. See if you can keep the weight even on both feet. And just relax at whatever angle you might be. So if you love it and you want to get extra through your back of your body, you can lift your sitting bones and get those hamstrings getting a good stretch in your chin, maybe or not. Then slowly work your way back up. Stay in the twist as you get up. And remember, no pressure in the low back as you lift your heart. So you want to make sure that upper body is the only thing in the back bend, not your lower back. Especially important when you're twisted. And then inhale up, exhale to the center, switch your arms around. Again, pull them back by your ears, shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, stretch your head up, exhale and turn to the other side. And again, keep the weight on both feet evenly and exhale however far you want into your forward bend, personal practice. And again, just breathe, relaxing, going only as far as your body needs this morning. Take a breath. And keeping the weight on both feet, staying in your twist, slowly work up into that upper body for a little bit more heart expanding back bend through the chest. Elbows back and stretch your head away and then inhale up exhale to the center arms up and palms toward the floor at shoulder level pivot at your hips come as far toward that parallel to the floor and stretch long through your spine and then just relax ragdoll however deep you want to go into the forward bend if you love it you can come with arms behind you pulling in deeper, or you can just relax in a halfway up pose. And then slowly again, chin in, and sitting bones down, wind your way back into mountain pose. Take a moment, you wanna feel that circulation. We've worked the spine all six directions. So yeah, let's do a chair. If everybody's got a chair, Let's do a little bit of chair thing. So those of you with your bench, go ahead and sit down. Those of you with chairs, go ahead and find your chair. So knees right in front of your hip bones, ankles right under your knees, toes straight ahead. So nice 90 degree angle in that area. You wanna be on your sitting bones and with the spine going up and your whole body lengthening through that upper body. So shoulders down and back, ribs in and up, so you're always supporting your lower back while you're in the positions. So remember, seated is just like mountain pose. Everything aligns exactly the same way, except you've got bends in the middle. So find your pose, just sink into the sitting bones and up through the crown, lengthening. And we're gonna first work the shoulder area. So we're gonna tuck the chin into that notch at the base of your throat. And just let the back of your neck get a good stretch. So only as deep as your body is willing to do through that neck area. And then if you like it and you need a little deeper, you can bring one hand, just place the hand, don't press with it. So position, not, not pressure. 
and then the other hand. So you're not really pressing, you're just adding a little weight to that stretch along the back of your neck. So just deepen chin toward your chest as much or as little as your neck needs this morning. Keep breathing, keep the rest of your body positioned upright, and then releasing your hands back down, tip your chin back up, crown to the ceiling. So you want to feel that circulation through, especially the back of your neck, but your whole neck and throat area. Then we're going to work the front of the throat. So lengthen up, chin toward the ceiling, but the rest of the body still staying the same. So really only working the neck into this upper body back bend, not so much the heart even, just the neck. And then move your jaw around, kind of side to side, circles, Neanderthal it, chin forward and back. And just kind of stretch through the throat and releasing through that TMJ area as well. And then neutral with the jaw and tip your head back up. So keep lengthening up through the base of your skull as you sink into your sitting bone. Feel that neck and throat area a little bit more stimulated and will lateral motion with the neck. So just tip one ear to one side without twisting anything. So this, Jessica, this is your stretch. So just relax through that other side of your shoulder. The side you're tipping toward, if you need extra stretch on that neck, bring your hand up and just add again weight, not pressure. Letting that neck get a little bit more stretch. And for those of you who love it, you can drop your hand down. Either fingertips to the floor and press, getting more stretch across the shoulder, or you can press the palm down and maximize it if you love it. So again, Sandy and Jessica, be careful. This is the one that was really bothering you for a while. So breathe, maximize or minimize. Remember personal practice. And then release the hand that's down back to your lap. The one that's on your head back to your lap and tip your head back up. Feel the difference in the two sides. So you know what we have to do next? Balance the body and do it the other way. So again, lengthen up through your spine, exhale, tip your ear to the other side. And again, no twisting on this, so the shoulders, hips, everything still facing forward, and the ear just tipping over. Hand on that side comes up, just a little extra weight on the side of your head, not pressure, and relax. So remember, muscles stretch when they relax. If you're tensing and tightening, they contract and they don't want to do it, so just let it release. And again, if you love it and you want more, hand down or palm down, your choice, or don't do that at all. And again, just breathe and relax. Notice one side may be feeling a little bit more stressed than the other, just relax as much as you can. And then hand back to your lap, hand down to your lap, and head tipping back up. Again, notice how that sides of your neck are feeling. A little lateral motion to the side there, side to side. And again, stretch and straighten, that's fine. And we're going to turn only the neck, only the chin, into the twist on this one, so the lower body does nothing. Exhale, looking back over your shoulder and working that, backing out of the driveway, head twist. So shoulders stay forward, hips stay forward, chin turns to the side only as far as it needs to go, and then keep lengthening the spine so you've got the room for your bones to move, and exhale maybe a little deeper or not, your choice. And then keep lengthening up and turn back to the center. Feel your neck. Notice your body. Make any adjustments. Don't forget those ribs are still in and up supporting your lower back. And again, lengthen your spine and exhale, chin toward the other side. And again, maximize or minimize. Remember, personal practice, you decide how far body your body wants to go. And breathe and release. So the more you exhale, the more those ligaments release, especially in the twist. So go as deep or not as your body wants. 
Breathing and exhaling, relaxing deeper. And then keep lengthening up and exhale, turning back to the center, feeling your neck, shoulder area a little bit more stimulated. So we got that bend at the top of the thigh, hip joint. You can put your thumbs there if you want to, just as a reminder that we're not bending at the waist. We're pivoting at the hips for this next one. So ribs are in and up, and we're just going to pivot forward, bringing your chest and chin to the front. So you want to keep your back as straight as you can, coming into this forward position. So you're bringing your ribs toward your thighs. You can bring them all the way if you love it, or you can just pivot a little bit. So remember, knees stay over your ankles, right in front of your hips. Those hip joints are kind of pushing back, sitting bones maybe a little bit further back as you pivot, keeping your back as straight as possible. So you want to keep that chin a little tucked in so the back of your neck keeps stretching as well. So keep lengthening. Keep those core muscles, though, engaged. And then pivoting back up, feel the core helping you work all the way back up to your seated position and hands back to your lap. So feel the core maybe a little bit more activated by that pivot. We're gonna bring one foot out to the front, straighten the knee, flex your heel, toes up toward the ceiling, and then kind of kneecap pulling toward your thigh and tightening the front of your thigh. Let your hamstring back of your leg stretch, and then keeping the foot pushing away through the base of the toes and the heels, lift your leg, a little or more or parallel to the other side. And keep pushing out through that bottom of your foot. Again, engage that core so it's supporting your spine and helping you with that hip flexor work, moving that leg up. So keep pushing it out. Keep the upper body straight, not contracted or at all, just core activated. And if you love this and you want a little bit more, you can lift your foot a little higher. You'll feel a little bit more through the quad, through the back of your leg, maybe even through the hip flexor and the core. So as much or as little as you want. And then exhale and bring that foot back down. So again, make sure everything's back aligned. Feel the difference in the two sides because remember, Yoga is that inner connection, inner observation, mindfulness. And then we'll, of course, balance the body with the other leg. So bring the other leg out, heel pressing away, and toes pulling back. Get that leg activated with the knee up, the front of the thigh tightening, stretching through the back of the leg, keeping the upper body straight, core active, and lifting. Spread the toes if you can. Press out through the whole bottom of your foot, so the base of the toes and the heels. Bring that leg up parallel to the other one or a little bit lower. Or if you love it, of course, you can always bring it up a little higher. So activate what needs to be activated. Do what's right for your body. Take a moment to breathe and exhale and release that foot back to the mat or the floor. So ankles under your knees. Toes straight ahead, everything lined up, core active. And we're going to bring the arms out to the front. You can keep them palms down or toward each other, whatever your shoulders prefer. So get a good positioning on that surface beneath you because we're going to lift our hips, <coughs> excuse me, sitting bones up off the chair into chair position. So shoulders down and... Press into your feet coming up. So you're just lifting a little bit. So your quads are going to be working quite a bit. And make sure that those knees don't go beyond your toes. You can keep the arms straight out or you can lift them over your shoulders if you want a little bit more. But be careful because that does activate the lower back a little bit more. So the arms straight out to the front is probably better for you, Marla. Kind of tuck the sitting bones down a little bit toward the floor and be in whatever position you like to be. Now keep your upper body in that straight line position. Oh yeah, and then go ahead and stand up if you haven't already. And exhale, you're in mountain pose. So take a moment there. And you can keep your chair if you've got it for our balance practice, or you can move to a wall if you prefer. And we're going to just work a very basic balance. 
So if you've got your chair, you can keep your hand on the back of the chair, and you want the side of your foot parallel to the chair. Same thing if you're at the wall. Just be a little away from the wall. You can keep your hand there. Turn your foot so that the outside of your foot is parallel to the wall. And then sink into your foot. You want this toes spreading, so lift them up. Get the base of the toes all the way across connected. And then put the toes down, no gripping, or that lifts the base of the toes, gives you less support. So, base of the toes connected, inside, outside of the heel connected, arch lifting the whole outside of the leg, pressing down into your foot. Get it really straight, ankle, knee, hip, shoulder lined up. Keep your hand on the chair or the wall and bring that other leg up. So this knee is still facing the front, hips are facing the front, Shoulders are facing the front, core is activated. So ribs up and in, moving toward your spine and your heart. So that core helps to support you as you bring that leg up. So bring it up a little or more or toward your heart. You can hold on if you want to or you don't have to. Kind of inner rotate with the thighs so that your leg is straight down. And then we're going to work the ankles. So circling. First one way, then the other way, and then flexing and pointing a few times. Keep the crown reaching to the ceiling. Keep that foot stable, hand on the chair or the wall if you need it, and then foot down. So as you get back into your fully extended mountain pose, if you're using your chair, you want to move it to the other side or turn around on the wall and face the other way. Again, the more you get that side of your foot parallel to the wall or the chair, the more that you keep that inner rotation on the thigh to line up the knee and the ankle and the toes with your body. So the more you've done that alignment, the sta more stable your balance practice is. And again, lifting the toes so you make sure that the base of the toes all get connected all the way across really improves your balance. Toes spreading out, not gripping, or that base gets messed up and you don't have that good support. Again, the whole bottom of your foot evenly supporting you up through the ankle, knee, hip, shoulder, up through the crown. Get that core activated first. Make sure that it's working for you. And again, just lift that other leg. So a little inner rotation to keep the leg and the foot, everything lined up as you bring that leg up off the floor. It can stay almost touching. It can, in fact, stay touching if it needs to, or parallel to the floor, or pulling in. You can wrap your hands around if you love it. And again, only as far as you want to go, and then working your ankle. So circling one way, circling the other way, and pointing and flexing a few times. Just make sure that whole range of motion is maintained because it's important as we get older. And then exhale and come back down into your mountain pose. So take a moment to go ahead and remove your chair if you've got one and come back to mountain pose. So hands to your heart, feet hip width apart, everything aligned in mountain pose. Look at your fingers and inhale them up towards the ceiling. So just keep extending through the fingertips, pull the shoulders down, sitting bones down, ribs in and up. And if you like a little back bend, remember upper body back bend, lift your heart and pull your thumbs back a little bit more. And then exhaling, bring your hands to your heart. We're going to pivot over into ragdoll, or you can bring your hands to your thighs above your knees and just straighten your back in a pivot. So drop down as far as you want to go. Breathe. Exhale tension. And then roll your way back into mountain pose. And again, just take a moment there, feeling the spine getting a little bit more stimulated. So we're going to do a twist. Um, maybe, maybe we'll do a twist on the chair. So again, find your seated position. <laughs> so 
So once more, knees right in front of your hips, ankles right under your knees, toes straight ahead, everything aligned and positioned, sitting bones connected up through your spine, crown towards the ceiling. And that we're going to keep lengthening through the spine. The more you get those bones separating, the more they're willing and able to twist. So be gentle where you need to. So Marla, just be very gentle, especially through that low back area. So bring one hand to your opposite knee, other arm out at shoulder level, shoulder blades down, crown reaching up. And then as you exhale, follow the hand around to the side or all the way to the back. And then drop your hand either on your chair or all the way to the opposite side of the chair if that works for a little extra twist. Those of you who love a twist, you can kind of leverage deeper into the twist, turning from your hips, ribs, and shoulder, not just your neck. Or be very gentle on your back, lower back, Marla, and just bring your body only as far into the twist as it's willing and able to do. So go ahead and breathe, keep lengthening up. And as you exhale, deepen only as far as your body wants. Personal practice. And then bring your arm back up and exhale, following it back around to the center and release. Feel your spine getting that stimulation from that twist energy, maybe moving up into your head for activating your meditative relaxation when we get ready in a moment. So again, we're going to twist the other way, check your positioning, bring your other hand to the outside of the knee on the opposite leg. And again, the shoulders stay down, the spine stretches way open, and exhale, hand around to the back. Drop the hand onto the chair or maximize into the twist a little deeper if that leveraging is something that's good for your twist. So again, breathe, lengthening up, exhale, deepening, whatever is right for your body. Take a breath, just relax, and focus inward. And when you're ready to release, bring your arm back to shoulder level and follow it back around to the center, releasing. So close your eyes and focus inward. If you're staying seated or if you're going to lay on the bench, go ahead and do that. If you're going to go to the floor, you're going to come up into chair position to get up out of the chair and rise to the ceiling and release going all the way to the mat. So those of you going to the floor, go ahead and lay down or on the bench. And we're going to go into corpse position for our relaxation. So kind of slide your sitting bones in the direction of your heels and let that lower back get a nice little support on the surface beneath you. Turn your hands, palms up so your shoulders are nice and open, slightly away from your sides. And release your shoulders and shoulder blades down into the surface beneath you. You can kind of roll those thighs inward and keep the knees and toes up towards the ceiling or let them relax a little bit more. And take a deep breath and just exhale. Let the belly release. Let the legs relax. Hips soften. Pelvis sink. Allow your torso to move a little deeper into that release as well. Shoulders, shoulder blades just down toward the surface as is comfortable for you, letting that heart stay nice and open. And close your eyes and focus inward. Move your jaw around a little to release any tension through the neck, through the face. Exhaling. And just letting your body soften and sink. And just allow your muscles to release with each breath. Noticing anywhere that's tight, just let it go. Allow your body to grow heavier with each exhalation. And just sink deeper into that earth embrace beneath you, letting Mother Earth support you. Belly moving as you breathe. 
full and deep breaths. Exhaling into relaxation. And as your body relaxes, just let it go and allow your awareness to release the contents of your thoughts. So no need to think of your body. No need to remember the past. No need to anticipate the future. Just let the breath flow in and out, allowing the thoughts to flow in and out as easily as your breath. And remembering it's the job of your mind to produce the thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. At this moment, just let the thoughts drift away and allow your awareness to release both your body and your mind. Let the awareness turn inward, finding that peace within. Fill your body with peace. Fill your mind with peace. Just a being of peace. And if you want to keep relaxing a little while longer, feel free to do so as long as you want. Or if it's time to reactivate, just begin drawing energy and awareness back to the room, back to your body. And as you breathe more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, stretching as you become ready and willing. And as you become ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, you can press your back down and draw your knees up and in toward your heart. Exhale, relax. Let your body know you appreciate its work in yoga today and every day. And when you're ready, just roll to the side, sit back up, and get ready for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me. We're probably running out of time.